Hello everyone, welcome back to Colouring with Kate. Thank you for clicking on the video. So welcome to part three of my um, Buddy Colour with Shell Arty. Um, I will link part two and part three to Shell's um, videos um, to this Buddy Colour below um, and also link my part one and part two below as well. So in this part what I want to do is complete the bark of the trees and maybe um, maybe some of the leaves as well that are coming off it and then also in another segment in the same part probably also show you how I uh, I'm going to colour maybe one or two houses and then um, yeah and then that, that will be part three so I'm only going to show you a small section of each because otherwise we'll be here forever so this um, bark of this tree, so bring you in a bit closer. So the bark of this tree um, I did with watercolour. So remember this double page has been pre-prepared with um, golden satin medium. So um, it's, it's, you know, takes watercolour, watercolour pencils, watercolour pens well so I used some watercolour pencils to colour this um, tree in the bark and then went over it with um, some well the, just to get out the details basically to highlight the details I used a Stedler Tri Plus Fine Liner in brown so I'll show you what I did I mean it's come out okay I'm not overly impressed with it but um, it'll have to do so I'm going to work on maybe this tree here right on the edge over here okay and maybe this one as well so bring you in a little bit closer again like that and the colours I'm using um, in the Derwent watercolour are golden brown 59 um, brown ochre 57 Venetian red 63 I think yep um, Van Dyke brown 55 maybe a bit of chocolate I'm not sure if I'm going to use um, this or not but possibly chocolate 66 so um, bring that there So just pencil in some of the lightest colour in. So this is the golden brown. And so I think the other bark that I did off camera, the trunk, I think I was too dark in some places so um, it was a bit difficult to see these lines you know that have already been drawn in by Kirby so I, uh, I thought I would um, not go as dark anymore so I'm just going round these sort of you know the ring patterns of the tree Now for a bit of um, brown ochre just on the inside edges. So I hope everyone's okay and that you are having a relaxing time or if you're at work that you are enjoying work. Or if you're on holiday, you're enjoying your holiday. Yeah, I went on holiday the other week, for a week, to Scotland. Um, went to the Highlands and it was really nice. Okay, so next one, Venetian Red. So again, I'm working into the centre a bit but I don't want to make it too dark because when I put my brown lines in with the fine liner 
I need to be able to see these lines. So yeah, if you go over to, you know, if you click on the links to Shell Artist Parts, I mean, she colours beautifully with pencil. Um, absolutely gorgeous colouring. Um, I like colouring with pencil as well, but I get bored very quickly and sometimes for a quicker fix I like to use watercolour, especially when you've pre-prepared the page, the page will take it well. That's not to say that I, I don't use coloured pencil a lot, because I do, but I can't imagine using coloured pencil for this whole double page. Um, But yeah, her, her colouring is absolutely brilliant, beautiful. So check it out. Um, Alright, so Van Dyke Brown. Right, so... Okay. Oh, I need to do my... Um, little branches coming off as well if you can hear some sort of people talking in the background that's my next door neighbours who are having a barbecue right so that's looking okay to me sorry about the noise I'm just um putting a piece of paper behind here so that when I use my um, water brush, oops, sorry, off camera. So I'm doing the bottom bit here now, so I'm just going to bring it out a little bit so you can see the bit that um, I actually forgot about. Yeah, I do um, often forget parts of pictures sometimes and, you know, I think I need to work on my observation skills. So I'm using the, obviously the same colours for this bottom bit of the uh, trunk. I'm just randomly putting colours in because when you use a water brush they mix in really well. So yeah I um, realised that the new Kirby book, um, is it called Fragile World I think something like that and um, it just I think it's about endangered species and animals um, and it's out, I think, next February, so 2021. I really cannot wait for that. Okay, so now I'm going to use my water brushes, that, the same ones that I usually use, which is the Arteza one. So I've got the, um, the fine one here. I think it's the fine one, yep. Yeah. And um, I think I can bring you in a little bit closer because I'm only going to work on the top bit first. So yeah, I can really hear the next door neighbours at the moment. Because they've got kids. Right, so that's um, I do blend it in, but not. I don't want to blend it in way too much because um, the thing is, the I want to keep the sort of lights and darks areas. So 
so yeah some blending but not you know enough to sort of make it all seem as if it's all together but still got the light and the dark areas So um, I released my complete pages the other day, when was it, it was Saturday, yeah, and um, yeah, it was received quite well, so I had some really nice comments, I was really happy about that. I don't know how many pages that I'm going to get to do this this month because um, because I am having a little bit of a clear out at home boy do I need to have a clear out because I've accumulated so many things over time as you do and that's why I haven't really had the chance to do much colouring at all and I just, you know, I, I just can't wait to get it complete so I can get on with my colouring and other stuff that needs doing because it does take a lot of time. So, yeah. Okay, and then do this bit here, bottom, sort of dabbing it so there's not too over blending. I don't. I don't want to keep the light and dark parts. Have gone over the lines in places, but I'm sure I'll be able to cover that up. Hopefully. Right there we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do is. I am going to let it let that dry and then go over it with some of my fine liner pen. Okay, so I'm just showing now how I um well it's nothing technical, believe me, um of how I did these lines. Just bring you in a little bit so you can see it, you know, the lines to show the sort of markings on the bark. Um so I'm just gonna do a little bit of that on camera so you can see. Um, I think it looks okay, um, you know, but yeah, I mean, I'll do it on camera so you can see um, on this big trunk here. So um, all I'm going to do is just go over the lines like this and that's it. Like I said, it's nothing um, special at all. But I think when you go over things like this, I think it brings the detail out. So, like I say, I apologise for any um, noise in the background. Our neighbours are outside and um, they're just a little bit loud. So if you can hear them, I do apologise. So, yeah, just going over it like, like this. You can see... I think it makes quite a difference because I've already got dark areas and light areas for my watercolour that I put down first. So just going over it and that's all I do pretty much um, is, is go over the bark. Um, and you can see, I'm just going to finish off, do a little bit more and then show you um, what it looks like. 
and then um, finish it off camera finish all the bark off camera and then maybe um, show you how I'm going to do the leaves and yeah some of the houses but one or two of the houses so yeah that's that's basically what, it, what it's looking like yeah I think it, it makes you can see what a difference it makes from the bit that I haven't put the fine liner on to the bit that I have put fine liner I could go over this with the water brush because this is a water based marker um, but uh, I want it to be well defined so I'm gonna actually um, leave it I think okay so I'm gonna do the rest of it off camera and then I'll come back and show you how I do the green foliage parts of the tree and also the um, you know little bit of the houses so I'll probably use watercolour pencils and maybe the Arteza twine markers right so in this part I um, just completed the rest of the um, tree trunks the bark on the tree trunks and then what I decided to do if I should bring you in a little bit closer you might be able to see hopefully um, on this tree right so basically if you look at this closer um, you can see here I just um, used my fine liner to um, go over the lines that Kirby had already put down and um, I was going to leave it like this but then I thought I thought it needed a little bit of blending especially in the centers so I, I did that up here so you can see the difference between this and um, this bit here at the bottom and I think it probably looks a little bit more realistic if I do sort of try to blend it out especially in the center of these circular parts um, but I'm, I'm not going to blend it out fully because I still want some lines to be quite well defined so I'm going to just try to do that now using my uh, water brush so hopefully I have to keep my book at an angle so I'm sorry about that it's because I have my camera equipment here on my um, right side and it's on a stand and um, it's in the way so I can't move my book straight towards the right Right, so yeah, I'm just, um, I've done the rest of the tree brought back on this uh, double page. I just thought I'd do this bit on camera. So just putting a little bit of water just to um, dissolve it a little bit, the pigment. And I don't really want to. Um, get rid of all the crisp lines so once I've done this I want to work on the leaves on the trees and then maybe show you on camera maybe one of the houses that I'm going to do I'm just going to move my book a bit higher so you can see me doing this bottom bit So yeah, because these are water-based Deadler Tri Plus Fine Liners, um, you can blend them out. You can blend them out um, because, like I said, I've used the Golden Satin Glazing Fluid for um, pre-preparing this page. So um, I can do this because. Excuse me, if I didn't use the satin glazing liquid, I wouldn't be able to blend it out like this on the paper, unfortunately. Right, 
okay I think that's okay yep so I think I'm gonna leave that to dry <coughs> and now um, I'm going to work on the foliage so the actual leaves on, on the tree so bring you out a little bit so you can have a look so what I thought I'm going to do is I'm going to use two sets of greens um, in watercolour for you know just randomly two sets of green shades and um, just place them so I'll probably place the lighter colours near the top and the darker colours maybe near the bottom um, because I'd assume it'd be brighter near the top, being closer to the sun. So the ones that I'm using, I'm using my museum aquarelles because they are very pigmented and gorgeous and I haven't really used them on this page yet, so I thought I'd use them. So I've got this set of greens that I'm using, um, these four. So I've chosen colours um, from dark to light that I thought would go well. And then here I also have sort of more olivey um, greens again going from dark to light so this is how I usually pick my colours um, so what I'm going to do is use the lighter colours the lighter shades and just place colour at the top I'll probably do these couple of trees that you can see here um, with that shade because that is near, near the sun that I drew in and then I just put my dark shade underneath just love watercolour I think um, I'm getting more and more into I just I just um, really like the way that the colours blend together you know when you add the water So that, sometimes I might not need all four colours that I chose but I pre-choose them for my page just in case I do, you know, need them. Alright, put some darkest green at the bottom here. A little bit there okay so that's that I'm just gonna add my water to it I think we can be a little bit closer definitely and I'm just going from light to dark I just love using my museum aquarelles, it's just so lovely and pigmented. Um, I certainly do not regret buying them. I think that was a, they were mainly bought open stock. Um, I bought the 12 set because I thought, I mean they are really expensive so I thought I've got to try these out because, you know, they have such good raves about them saying that they, you know, that they're just brilliant and I just wanted to try them out and when I got the 12 um, and I swatched them out I thought right I need to uh, get these bit by bit so I got the rest open stock over some time Oh yeah, I really like how this is coming out. I really like this combination of greens. So yeah, I wonder what you all are up to. Um, 
whatever you're up to, I hope you're um, enjoying it. Right, so that's that. Um, I think that looks really nice. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to complete the rest of um, the new art, sorry. Um, I'm going to complete the rest of the leaves on these trees in the same way and also using the the olive greens probably for the for the tree tree leaves further away maybe just to give it a little bit of variety and then I'll come back and uh, maybe colour the house on camera so you can see how I'm going to do that and what I'm going to use. Okay so in this part I'm going to show how I colour one of the houses on uh, camera and then do the rest off camera so because there's quite a lot of fine detail here on the house I've chosen to do this with my um, Stadler Tri Plus fine liner so I've picked out browns, um, reds, purple and blue so those are the colours I'll be using um, along with maybe some gold gel pen as well so I'm going to use those colours the bright colours here that you can see are for um, the sort of windows so just to sort of show that lights coming out of them and you know I've got different shades of that so I've got bright luminous um, yellow and orange and then just a standard yellow and then I've also picked out some uh, gel pens in similar colours to the colours that the main dinosaur the stegosaurus is in so um, to start with I've got browns as well so browns for some of the sort of to show like I don't know the wooden bits so I'm going to start off with um, oh sorry before I start just to also show that I've got some browns in the Artesas twi markers as well so um, I'm just placing this light colour here and then maybe a darker brown here we do the same on this side so I use my water brush and maybe bring you in a little bit close as well so you can see what I'm doing on this house there we go you can see it does blend because they're water based markers and it's on the um, pre-prepared page
Okay, so that's my main house basically that, that I'm probably going to do the rest of them like. Um, I'm just going to add some detail in now. Um, so, again, a little bit closer. So, I'm just going to get a gel pen and bring out some of these detailed bits. Um, just so that it stands out a little bit more. Um, be these little bits here have been drawn in. also go back in with my brown and sort of define some of these windows as well. So yeah, that's what I'm probably going to do. Maybe add a bit more definition on this roof as well. I don't know, I just experiment and see where just blend that out a little bit, you know, how it how it looks. Yeah, so basically that's all I'm going to do. I probably um We'll leave it there now and um, I might add some, I haven't got any with me right now but I might add some silver gel pen in here, maybe go over it a bit more but yeah the houses are going to be done mainly with the fine liner like I said and gel pens and I'll do a little bit of blending and stuff. So next time you see my part four, oops sorry wrong way, Hopefully I will have completed um, all of the um, foliage that you can see um, and maybe some of the this bit here which I'm probably just going to use some watercolour and then for my final part I will probably just show um, how I'm going to colour some of the dinosaurs um, and then that's it. So um, I hope you um, liked this video and um, until next time, bye.